Joining us today is a Janesville Jet alum, a Colorado College alum, a published children's book author, the founder of Triumph Together, a nonprofit that connects athletes with children's hospitals, Jack Gates. Welcome to the Buzz Pod. Yeah, thanks for having us, fellas. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. For the listeners, can you just talk a little bit about what Triumph Together is? Yeah, so Triumph Together is a um, nonprofit organization um, now under the Mitchell Thorpe Foundation. I just like merged with another company. Um, and what we do is we find kids at children's hospitals throughout the country and create kind of like VIP experiences for them uh, with athletes. So we connect them with collegiate and pro athletes and try to get them like tickets to games, uh, meet and greets with players, sign gear, videos of encouragement before surgeries, and just kind of create a cool experience to kind of get them out of their mental state at the hospital and try and lift their spirits for a little bit. Man, really cool. And, and that's exactly what you do. If if you go on the website, which we'll share a little bit, it has the Triumph Together events. And just to list off a couple of these, Anaheim Ducks, Boston College, hockey, Arizona State hockey, uh, Golden State Warriors, Green Bay Packers, um, Florida Panthers, Los Angeles Kings, Notre Dame, uh, football, New York Giants, the, the list goes on and on. Tons of high-end teams and high-end events. I see Vegas Golden Knights, Jack Eichel's on there a couple times. Super cool. What was your inspiration for all of this? Yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of goes back to when we played together in Janesville. Um, we had um, one of our host parents uh, was a teacher. I think Bree was a teacher at an elementary school or middle school or something. And her kind of deal was letting us go over to their house and hang out and have big group uh parties and whatnot was that some of us had to go and, and help out at, a, at the at the school the next week. Um, so we'd go in and kind of read the books to the kids and hang out and just kind of saw that impact and saw how much the kids cared and saw how much they they appreciated it and how it kind of made a last an impact for them. Um, and like, you know, we're kind of 16, 17, 18, 19 year old, just kids just living in some random people's houses and whatnot in the middle of nowhere, but it kind of makes that impact and um, shows how much that they care about what we do and kind of watching us. Um, so I kind of transferred a little bit to school, to college. Um, and it was my senior year and we had the president of the children's hospital in Colorado Springs come and speak to one of my classes. And um, I just wanted to kind of give back to the community that always supports us and comes to our games and whatnot. So um, I asked if a couple of our kids um, and teammates could go and visit the hospital. Um, so we were able to do that and the kids made signs for us and um, we played like mini hockey sticks in the hallway and just hung out and it was a super cool experience. It, again, it took 30 minutes out of our day and these kids will remember it for the rest of their lives and things like that. So we just got a lot of good feedback on that, um, just kind of posting it and whatnot on social media. And then um, we kind of raised some money within my school just to um, adopt some families for Christmas and Thanksgivings um, for some some presents and meals and things like that. And then it just kind of snowballed and snowballed. So we had a lot of people reaching out, like Nico reached out early. You guys reached out, like saying how much, how cool this is. How can you help out? How What can we do? So we just kind of expanded it to whoever wanted to help and it just kind of blew up. So the past two years, we had over 110, 15 kids across the country just in various sports. So um, it's been pretty cool to see how much it's, it's blowing up. So yeah, it's, it's been it's been cool. Dude, yeah. that's uh, that's unbelievable, man. And, you know, the thing is, is it's great to have a great idea and an idea that's going to help people. But then the next step is the hardest one, which is making it come to fruition. Right. So, like, how does a kid like you that's, you know, played hockey his whole life and, you know, obviously now you're the founder of Triumph Together, which is a big, beautiful uh, thing that you've started and is growing rapidly. But, you know, back then you were just a kid who's played hockey his whole yeah. entire life, probably knew nothing but hockey, um, obviously with a um, non-cultural, I guess, hockey background from California. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, us hockey players, that's all we know and do. So, you know, how did you kind of like turn that into I want to do this to then actually doing it? Yeah, uh, again, that's kind of I was winging it as much as possible, to be honest with you, and it just kind of worked out. But um, yeah, again, you just, you hit on the head, just had an idea, kind of wanted to make it happen, see where it went. And like just the support from everyone, like my teammates, the old teammates, their teammates, just everyone, just that support made it a lot easier um, in that sense that it wasn't just me working alone. Like I had other people supporting me and and wanting to be there with me along for the ride. 
Um, so that's been a big help. But yeah, I didn't go to school for this. I graduated in economics and business um, right out of school. I had like a marketing um, job where I just did this on the side for a little bit. But again, it's just all connections, just playing a big game of telephone. Hey, can you help? Can this person help? Can you text this person for me? And everyone's been so great. Everyone wants to help in everything that we do. So um, that's been the coolest part too, is just all the support and everyone kind of joining together and kind of I'm, like, I'm, I'm head manning it, but everyone's kind of a part of this. So it's been pretty cool to see just everyone um, helping along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Do you do this alone? As of now, yeah. So I, I kind of run, like I said, I kind of have some different people. Like it's kind of cool seeing the, um, like the community and not only like, like I touched on like the sports community, I want to sell, but also like in the childhood cancer community or the um, nonprofit industry, everyone kind of helps one another. Um, so I reached out like very early on to a couple other charities um, like how, how does this work? How, cause I, again, knew nothing what to do. Um, but they're very good at recommending kids that like sports to me. So I have some, in, um, like a charity that I work with in LA, I have one that I work closely with, um, out in, in, uh, out East and one in Chicago. And they kind of are good about feeding you kids and helping you and helping you grow. Um, cause a lot of the charities, we have the same goal. We want to help the kids and a lot of them are very niche. So there's like one that gives like American girl dolls to like the kids that are like the little girls who are losing their hair. One does like dream trips if they go to like the amusement parks or Hawaii or something. So like if anything that sports comes up, they push it my way. So that's kind of helped a lot. Just having that kind of support system within every industry. Yeah, absolutely. You talked about joining, uh, the Mitchell <laughs> Thorpe program what, what yeah yeah, what yeah is so yeah so they they kind of reached out to me um because like i said we're kind of helping similar kids they're based out of the san diego area so i moved back to san diego after school um and they reached out and wanted to bring me on and kind of collaborate and merge our charities which has been awesome so far it's been probably the past six months or so um but their focus is kind of on the financial end of things so they help pay for medical bills they help pay for physical therapy they help uh like actual therapy for parents to try and keep them like together in like tough times. And um, so they're paying for all like the rent and things like that. So that helps me as well. Cause they, I, now I kind of have that one, two punch where I can create these cool experiences, but I can also help them financially and pay for their bills and pay for them. Um, and like the times that need it, like the parents, but I can also help the kids um, in this respect too. Oh yeah. I'm sure that's that goes such a long way, man. That's that, incredible. That, that's so much. that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So that's been a big leap. So now I have a lot more time to kind of do other things and kind of grow the brand as much as possible. Cause now I'm working on it full time. So now I get a lot more chances to kind of brand us in different ways, like the book, like different bigger group events. Like we have a big um, thing for childhood uh, in September is childhood cancer awareness month. And so we're doing like a big luxury bonfire thing where we're having like 15 families come out and we're doing like a big bonfire and uh, barbecue thing and just doing cool bigger group of events to kind of celebrate what they're going through rather than me just trying to figure out time to do one or two events. Nice. Well, you better get the s'mores ready to go. For that <laughs> yeah. for those, sure. those, hit. those kids, I just want to say real quick, like that'll be cool to get them uh, together and, you know, maybe they'll share experiences. Maybe they'll just play and have fun. Either way, it'll be really cool for all of them. I have to say, man, like, um, We've done collaborations together quite a bit, and uh, the ones that I love most are the ones that I'm involved in, where I actually get yeah. to meet the kids, right? Like the mm -hmm. the two times now that we've had kids come out to SoulFlow has been unbelievable. And I'll tell you what, like, it's kind of nerve-wracking when you're the guy that's, like, yeah. like the, the, the celebrity, I guess. You're like, did this guy have fun? Like, I wonder if he had yeah. a good time, you know? and. And that's when I realized, uh, like this past event with Logan, who's a warrior who beat, who's eight years old, beat leukemia two times. Shout out to Logan. Mm -hmm. He also got the game winner for us for Team Blatch. Oh, yeah. Um, you realize, like, it was he got on the ice at the, he watched the game. He got on the ice after for five minutes. Uh, he did a little interview. He got to meet the guys, and uh, you know, Brandon Duhame got him a stick. Uh, Ryan Lomberg got him a hat. You know, really cool things that guys just did out of the goodness of their hearts and but really it was so short for me I felt like he was on the ice for five minutes you know we gave yeah. him a few things he shook hands and I was kind of like I wonder if 
he had fun or if that was like if he was expecting more and then next thing you know like his dad is just so grateful you know like he had the best time like Mm -hmm. it was amazing like you know he'll never forget it and then that's when I realized like it doesn't really take much you know like we're, we're in the position where we're grateful that like it really doesn't take much like even you Jack you know you played at a high level you played division one college I'm sure when you were at Colorado College you know like you said, you got to meet kids at the hospital who were fans of Colorado College, and it took like not much to just make yeah. their absolute day or week or year, you know. So, yeah. and instill a memory in them that they'll remember forever. So, I just wanted to put that in there because uh, for anyone that's looking to get involved, like it really doesn't take much, man. Like a signed jersey it goes such a long way. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to get that in there, man. It's been unbelievable to be a yeah. part of it, by the way. Yeah, Thanks I appreciate for- that. And like, yeah, like this kid gets to go back now to school and be like, hey, like I, I met these guys. And like every time that you guys are on TV now, like, I mean, you guys had a bunch of pro guys there that had they don't know me. They don't know what I do. They don't really know anything. But like you said, they all kind of stepped up and did something. And even if it is five minutes, like now he can go back. And every time he sees you on TV, he's like, damn, I met that guy. Like, this is really cool. Like, like he said hi to me. He gave me this. And so it does last a while, which is pretty cool other than like that five minutes, which it does mean a lot. But it kind of grows and sticks with them through whatever they've gone through and kind of through the rest of their life, which is pretty cool. Yeah, Yeah. man. And, and I'm sure in working with these kids, like you get a lot of inspiration from it, man. Like they're so, you know, you think of a little kid, like so innocent, like they deserve none of this stuff, you know, nobody deserves this, but you know, like, I don't know, it's different when it's a little kid, man. Mm -hmm. And to see these kids, life to live. yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to see these kids, like, um such great kids going through it battling and you know it's so inspirational so I actually wanted to get into this question which is you know you're a published children's book author Mm -hmm. which is no small feat so congratulations and um the book is called Super Cooper wins the Stanley Cup and uh Cooper Cooper Tippett is actually uh, Mm -hmm. a young kid who um you know, I'm sure you've connected through with Triumph together, but maybe just uh, go ahead and talk to us about that whole connection. Yeah, started. yeah, Cooper's, yeah Cooper's the first kid pretty much. We kind of helped out because like at early times, there's a lot of COVID going on and we couldn't really visit the hospitals as much. And so we just met him over like a Zoom call, kind of like this. We had four or five of my teammates here and Cooper, like they reached out to the hospital and you know, like this kid loves hockey or whatever. So we just like hopped on a Zoom call and played a bunch of like little question games and trivia stuff and just kind of chopped it up for a little bit. And it just saw like even that made a huge impact. And like his parents are so grateful and went up sending send him like a signed stick. And then when COVID was done, um, we were able to bring him out um, to one of our games. And then he was a big um, Avalanche fan. So we got him to the Avalanche and we just kind of stayed in touch. And his sister plays hockey and she was out in, in San Diego or in Anaheim and he came with and they, we, me and him went to the Avalanche when they played the Ducks and the Kings and kind of did an event there where Z was like threw him over a stick and stuff and he rolled his Zamboni. So I definitely just stayed in touch with him and he's gone through so much that it's like, every time you hang out with him and hang out with that kid, like it's like the best time ever, which is like crazy to say, cause he's gone through so much, but he's always has like such a cool look on life and everything. So yeah, I just wanted to share kind of his story and kind of put that in the book and kind of share real life experiences that he goes through and kind of show kids that other kids may not be like them. So just sharing his story and kind of showing how like triumph kind of plays a little impact in that. And obviously it's a kid's book. It ends up being, kind of not real at all but it starts off there's a lot of real things about it like it has him it has his um support dog velocity and it. it has his mom has the treatments he went through there's like pictures of him and his friends playing like mini hockey sticks in the hallway while he's at treatment and just being able to like share that with the world and show his message has been pretty cool and then we got to go to the hospital that he was at and share with all his nurses and give them all the books and hand out books at the hospital. And they're like, Oh, I can't believe this is so amazing. Like I remember all this part throughout his journey and seeing it in the book is super cool for him and his friends. And now we can share it. And like, we had all his friends come out and he was signing books and uh, we had like 150 people come through and he signed books for everyone and kind of got to share that with everyone, which is pretty special. Dude, I got goosebumps. Man, I'm supposed to be a tough guy, man. Don't try to make me cry on here. Cool, yeah. I'm, I got, I'm trying to work on a couple more. I have one that I wrote out too about like two of the girls that we help out. Um, and I'm trying to do it with the San Diego Wave. So I'm just trying to like share these kids' stories and kind of show it to kids at a young age that it is okay to be different or what they're going through and just kind of share messages, but also 
expand kind of what we do and in the industry and kind of share all these all these life stories that these kids are going through man that's that's unbelievable jack you're you're the man bro but um what was that process like obviously writing a book i mean you can't just pen and yeah. paper write it right like, not a joke like, about it it's work. not yeah, it's not as hard as you think just because you're writing it for five and six year olds so um, yeah. <laughs> it's not not the most in-depth writing process but it's just kind of like i said they make it easy just having their their stories are already kind of written and just having me explain that that to kids and kind of put in our events so i usually kind of write about their their upbringing and their like ideals and what kind of what they're going through in the hospital and then how they go to these events and they kind of meet these athletes and try and get them involved and kind of share their dreams and just show different ways that um kids can kind of reach their goals no matter what they're going through so but yeah it's not it's not very difficult for me but um the big thing is like the illustrations i try and make it look like the kids and look like like their hospitals or their their houses or their events that we go through. So I kind of um, hire an illustrator and go through like specific times that um, that we can really portray what they look like. So they can go back, show their friends and their teachers and things like that. And it kind of looks like them and, and feels like them, which is pretty cool. Thanks. No, that's awesome. And I think the most the most unique part I'd say about it is you're writing a children's book and, you know, people can buy it and people are going to, read it and all that and you know hopefully uh when they buy it you know obviously that money is going to triumph together and helping kids but mm -hmm. the best part about it all is that this kid cooper you know like he's got a book about himself yeah and, you know that's like what touched me most is you're like he's signing autographs like that's probably that was his day right like yeah, he's signing yeah. autographs you know like what's going on? yeah so, yeah he had his buddies come his teachers come his principal came like they, someone from like the school like whatever the school yearbook came and like took a picture of him and his book and his like dogs in it so he's all pumped about that so it's, yeah it was pretty cool to see all the all the support he got and everyone kind of rallying around him was pretty special no that's that's amazing bro that's incredible um, and so obviously you've had so many great experiences with, uh, kids, um, meeting people and whatnot. Like, I, I, I kind of don't want to ask this question, but I'm dying and all like, what's been your favorite, uh, experience like, uh, or like your top three. I mean, yeah. I know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's tough to say, like, it's cool seeing these like big group events. Like you kind of touched on it earlier, but it's kind of cool to see if I bring three or five families to an event and seeing the kids kind of connect with one another and like a lot of times they were in the hospital together and now they're kind of out of treatments being able to like reconnect and like the parents kind of like lean on each other and the siblings get to go like they're going through tough things too that the other siblings get to um, go through and they get to kind of connect that way too so I think the bigger group events are, are pretty cool to just see how happy everyone is and everyone hanging out and like kind of they're out of that tough time now um, but definitely some like specific games is like we grew up around hockey and stuff but we always like I remember so loves loves all the fantasy stuff so like we're watching football all the time like being able to go like I'm going to these like I went to a University of Texas football game is like packed sold out game like I'm not experiencing that at Carl out of college so like I'm seeing these crazy games in real life and then I get that this cool VIP access like I'm meeting two running backs that just got drafted like in the first and third round of the NFL I'm like I gotta watch them on TV now I gotta go to like these NFL games like I'm going to UCLA in two days and going to a football practice and hanging out with the team and like just things like that and then like like seeing like these these stars like like Alex Morgan her support and she's like a stud like one of the most famous female athletes ever and just having her just like having a conversation with her and the kids and seeing how how cool she is and all these kind of high-end players that you see um just watching on tv all the time that's not in our niche sport um has been pretty cool to see and just getting to experience that because we're all fans of sports here so like just being able to go and just be a part of sporting events even though i'm not still playing is pretty cool just kind of ride that wave yeah and uh, uh how how cool has it been to see like the feedback from the actual players i'm curious because you know i remember we did that thing with keller i like wasn't sure i was going to turn out and then he messaged me man that was awesome yeah and so i'm wondering if you get a lot of players that are maybe you can kind of tell through text or through conversation that they're they're gonna do it for you but they're not dying to do it 
But then after it happens, they're like, hey, man, like, let me know whenever I, I really loved it and I want to do it again. Like, how, yeah. how much does that happen? Yeah, 100 percent. That happens kind of all the time, which has been great. So all the all the players and like any time that I send like a second event, they're like, yeah, man, whatever you need, I'm down, um, which has been pretty cool. And just seeing like like I hear stories are like, oh, like I heard about like your charity from like some kid that I used to grow up with. He's like, oh, I was at I was at this game or I was at this like someone was just at a big kind of banquet sort of sports banquet up in like LA with the Kings, a bunch of Kings alumni or whatever. And they're like, yeah, some kid was like some of the like old alumni was talking about how they just did an event with you and whatever. He's like, I didn't even mention your name and like it got brought up. So like just stories like that has been pretty cool. And like, yeah, all the feedback from from all the players has been awesome. They're more than happy to do anything, um, which is pretty cool. And it gets back to like now more agents are kind of reaching out so hopefully more and more of that happens because like their players are like i just did something pretty cool like hopefully i get expanded that so the biggest thing for us is just growth right now and just growing as much as possible and the more people are talking about it the more we get out there the more people help um it's, it's, it's pretty cool so yeah awesome uh, real, real quick actually i just want to get this in there like uh people want to if they want to donate right i know this is mid-conversation but if people want to donate um do they just go to your website and yeah anything donate? yeah anything through our, our website um yeah try them together.net um any anything through our website goes straight to the kids um there's different ways to donate things like that or even just reach out if you're an athlete or know of a family member kid or someone that's going through treatment like there's different ways to connect with me via Instagram or, or um, our website that we can get involved in any way. So like I said, growth is the biggest thing. So the more we can do, the better. So um, anything that can be get put on my plate, I try and make happen. Mm -hmm. That's, that's awesome. What, um, I, I know it's not all rainbows and sunshine. Uh, what challenges or obstacles does running the nonprofit bring uh, for you? Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely a lot of lot of obstacles, um, just because it is kind of a sensitive subject. And there is kind of some things that you, some kids are going through a lot of tough treatments that they aren't kind of allowed to be around people, or, or sometimes they do go to these events, and they had chemo that morning. And so they're not kind of really feeling it, which is tough, like, just things like that definitely is, is tough, and especially trying to get kind of involved with the hospitals um, is a little bit tough just because they have so many like HIPAA things and that's not the first thing that's on their mind. They're trying to put the kids first and things like that. So we're not always at the top of the list of people um, hitting us up and, and things like that, but um, I, it has been good. And also like, we're also a small fish in a big pond here. Like we have make a wish, we have team impact. There's some giant foundations that are, are doing this, but it comes with the good and the bad. They have a lot of kind of hoops they have to jump through just because they're big kind of foundation and they have to go through different people and different layers. So like it, with me just running this, it kind of helps out that it's a lot more fluid, a lot more connection because I get to go and hang out with these families and, and be one-on-one -on -one with them and kind of grow and with them. So we don't really help families one and done. Like I've bring multiple kids to different games and experiences through San Diego. Like I just went to like a girl's birthday party and taught her how to ice skate with all of her friends and like just things like that. Like I gotta stay in touch and keep in contact with these guys, um, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah. And you mentioned there's uh bigger fish uh in the pond, right? But make a wish, uh, how many kids send applications and don't get picked, right? So yeah. what's the application process like for Triumph Together? Like if I'm a a, a kid that's that's sick and I wanna I yeah. want to have an experience that Triumph Together can put together. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, the bigger the bigger foundations, they definitely have to kind of sift through who gets what, and they have to be in certain parameters and and be in certain diagnoses and have, be in a list. There's a big wait list for all these events, but um, yeah, for us, we just kind of go through just like age, name, diagnosis, where they're at with treatment. And then it's just like three questions, like who's, where do you guys live? What's your favorite sports team? Is there your favorite player? Um, and then we just kind of work with that and work with setting them up with, with what they can. But yeah, it's just kind of me. So I can kind of filter it as I, as I see fit, but usually we try and pick up anything that we can for any kid that's going through um, a specific treatment or, or, or going through a tough time. Awesome. Do you have to travel a lot to connect with the kids? Well, yeah, so that's that's kind of been nice for me too. Is as uh, like I said, keep saying the support is like I at first it was it was a little tough because I was kind of going through the route of 
going through these athletes and trying to reach out to the athletes. And they always said yes, which is awesome, but they are very limited in what they're able to do. So they, if I'm not there, if I'm helping a kid out, and like I said, I was working another job. So I'm like playing a big game of telephone. I'm like, all right, I have a kid in like Noah Kate helped me out when he was out in, um, in, uh, the flyers and he's like all right he's he's great he's like yeah i'll help out i'll get tickets perfect and then tell him to meet me like in this spot afterwards and i'm like okay like they said he's good but like obviously they're playing this is like two days before their game like i'm telling the family i'm like all right you're gonna meet in section 102 at the bottom of the stairs after the game and like he's gonna meet you and like i don't know if that's gonna happen or not i'm not there i'm not having that so like it ends up it ended up working out every time but it's still like nerve-wracking for me because like it looks bad on me if it doesn't work out but you, you guys know it's game day, whatever. If you have a good game, a bad game afterwards, that's not the first thing is like, I'm going to go meet this kid with a signed jersey afterwards. It's not really what you're thinking about. So now I kind of shifted a bit more and try and go the route. I talk with the athletes and then they get me involved with like the community outreach team or the PR team. And they're able to kind of get me tickets and they're more the, the, the middleman. And so I can kind of push it on their plate if I'm not able to travel um, and do that. And they're awesome about just, setting up and they can do more they can get you on the jumbotron they can set up like a zamboni ride they can get you on the bench for warm-ups they have a lot more leeway because that's kind of their main role is to do things like this so that helps me out but i do try and travel as much as i can um with what i'm able to do so i do a lot on the west coast i do all like the southern california the northern california um try and go we work a lot with the asu um with all their sports so i try and go to those um but yeah i try to plan different trips and family outings around kind of things that I'm doing. So I can kind of hit two, two birds with one stone there, but yeah, hopefully there's a lot more travel involved. Um, the bigger we get and the bigger teams we we get, which is worth it for me to travel to. So hopefully a lot more in the future. Nice. And now that, and now that you're full time, what, what does the day to day operation kind of look like for you? Are you writing books in the morning? <laughs> it's on social media in the afternoon. Like, yeah. So it's more, it's pretty much what I was doing just on a revamped level. So I just kind of run my program. So my program is a program under there. So I'm still running my program with hundred percent and doing um, what I, what I can with that. And then there's a lot more kind of fundraising that I help them with. So uh, we have like a big uh, golf tournament coming up um that i'm fundraising for i'm i'm actually going back to janesville and we're doing a, a special jersey game with for childhood cancer awareness month and nico was actually at the one last year so we make like special jerseys for childhood cancer awareness and auction them off after and we always invite some kids from the hospital there to like drop the puck and um, go on the bench for warm-ups and things like that so definitely some more fundraising on that end um but yeah again just kind of revamped as much as possible so just growing um i just can help out a lot more kids at this time now yeah, then you're going back to Janesville. I got that stick. Uh, I got that stick for you. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. some more money. Yeah, solo yeah. sticks going for a lot. Sign <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's I, probably where you can get the most money for. for it right there in Janesville, exactly. where it all started. Yeah. Baby. Yep, yep. People are people are clamming for a solo stick sign. So yeah, we need to get that on the auction table. What's the uh, What's the next event? Is Janesville your next event? No, so we have um, UCLA footballs in two days going there. Um, I'm talking with the San Diego Wave soccer team again, and we're trying to hit all like the NFL right now too and NCAA now that um, they're kind of starting up because it's a lot easier to get in before the because football you only have five games or six, seven, eight home games. So there's not a lot of kind of time to do events during those home games. So I try to get in for like preseason and practices and things like that. So that's very high on the mind right now. So I just met with like Georgia football this morning. We're working on Michigan. We're working on um, the Browns, the the Bills, the Chargers, Rams. So we're trying to work on all the NFL teams right now before it gets it gets crazy and all all the big dogs start taking up all the um, all the time slots. So yeah, trying to get that involved right now, but um, very busy at this time. It's definitely ramped up. The summers summers not very busy. Summers just baseball and usually less. Like, Women's soccer has been actually huge for us because yep. it's a very tight knit group. So like everyone's played with someone or knows someone. So they've been awesome um, to work with. But now that it's the fall season, it starts getting all the all the football and hockey and basketball start ramping up. So it's definitely busy now. Yeah. How many events uh, during the season would you say that you have about event? Depends <laughs> on the month. Yeah, I'd say definitely now we probably are at six a month wow last nice. month we helped out i think like 14 kids so it's definitely like i think the last two weeks we had like 
I think we had five, five events the past two weeks, um, just kind of ramping up. And now, like I said, I can have a bigger Rolodex and people are kind of, um, recommending families and charities are helping out and families are recommending families. Just the more families are help out, the more kids they're like, I was in treatment with this person, or I know this person, um, via social media has been huge, just kind of recommending one another and kind of just the, the publicity we get through social media, uh, the more that grows, the more kids we get. So it's definitely getting a lot, um, a lot on the plate, but it's good. So the more kids we can help out, the better. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you quickly tell the people where they can support you and where they can find you on social media, uh, all your tags and everything? Yeah. So, um, like I said, the website was trendtogether.net. Um, our Instagram is definitely our biggest platform because everyone wants to see the, the happy kids and all, all that kind of stuff. So our Instagram is triumph underscore together underscore. Um, and you can find us there and that's connected. We have a link with all of our Facebook and Twitter and, um, TikTok and things like that. So, um, that's definitely our biggest avenue. Um, and, and the most way we, we spread, spread the word. Very easy. Um, yeah, that's, aw- that's awesome. I actually want to read this off the website real quick. Um, who we are triumph together is a nonprofit program under the Mitchell Thorpe foundation that works to connect collegiate and professional athletes with kids at children's hospitals by getting them tickets to games, meeting greets with players, signed gear, videos of encouragements before surgeries, et cetera. We create long lasting involvement for kids who are unable to be involved in a normal sports fan experience. Sports are about community and passion, and we want to expand the reach for kids who may not have that opportunity. Uh, dude, that, uh, man, like I honestly can't say this enough, man. What you've done is unbelievable. Um, I'm so grateful to have been a part of it the few times that I have been, um, Z actually wanted to touch a little bit about your career, but I, I got like goosebumps all over my body. So my nipples are hard and everything. <laughs> um, because, uh, seriously, man, you're just, uh, you're, you're a hell of a guy. Cool. You're a hell I of a guy. It, yeah. I mean, you know, I yeah, appreciate you guys too for supporting. Like, so I just said, he's helped me out with sticks that like, you've helped me out kind of connecting with guys. Like, you mentioned Keller, like you've had a kid that was just there last week. Like, yeah, it was awesome. And just like those experiences, cool, especially bringing kind of a kid that's not in a hockey community kind of to, to a uh, hockey kind of experience is pretty cool, especially in Florida. So hopefully with them winning and stuff, it kind of grows a bit more because we have a lot of kids out there and we're seeing a lot more hockey fans, which is cool for us to see and kind of grow, grow the sport in that way as well. Yeah. And I know tickets are tough to get to Panthers games. Hopefully the PR people there are nice to you, but you know, (laughs) so flow tickets are free. (laughs) <laughs> and uh and they might cost game money. Tomorrow. Game might, tomorrow. the so the soul flow uh uh tickets might cost money in the future but they will forever be free for triumph together appreciate that well yeah said. but but z get get into this guy's career a little bit i yeah. actually saw something dude wait real quick because this is actually insane if you go to your elite prospects you scroll down a little bit then you scroll down a little bit more <laughs> and then you keep scrolling and then at the end, you see 2012, 2013. Oh, I just took it away. 2012, 2013 stats. San Diego goals, Bantam major. 12 games played, 23 goals, 24 assists for 47 points in 12 games. Um, so like there it is, the glory days, Nico. Yeah, I mean, people don't know this. I mean, we're talking about you like triumph together. People are like, this guy was just born an amazing dude. He's got a big heart. He's an amazing guy, but they have no idea that you were an absolute player. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a a strange upbringing in the the hockey community, being from San Diego, and whatnot. So yeah, we kind of grew up playing roller hockey. Like everyone who really plays ice, like grew up playing roller hockey all the time. Like we still play over the summers and kind of using that roller tournaments and things like that when we're back from from schools and 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 juniors and stuff. But yeah, started playing roller hockey and then kind of made my way through San Diego. You kind of have to go more north the the older you get because that's kind of the better team. So you start out in San Diego in the hometown, and then eventually I had to make my way up to Anaheim and play for the Junior Ducks. My P whatever 15 16 year um and then end up going to Janesville um for two years there but it's like it's definitely a question of when you're kind of growing up in in this kind of area is at that time when I was making my way I was either going to go to Anaheim or I was going to go to juniors or I was going to figure out kind of a prep school because there's not much major hockey out here and you're traveling all the time so 
in high school, I'd leave leave school at two thirty, go drive to Anaheim, practice, drive home, and get back at like eleven p.m. And it's just like it's definitely a bagger of a of a fifteen and sixteen year old lifestyle. So um, you definitely have to start making plans. But it's getting bigger now, which is awesome. It's definitely growing a ton out here they're having it in high school games they're having stuff like that but yeah Yeah. when i was playing we definitely had to make that decision whether it go to the connecticut prep schools go to juniors um so i ended up going the junior route and going to janesville um pretty early on um yeah where i played with with zach there and then uh just kind of from there i I guess i committed before janesville so yeah you did you did talk about that process because you you were one of the first 98s to commit yeah yeah so i was yeah definitely I, I was always looking at, at schools in Colorado just because I was the closest, by far the closest place to play. Um, and we always had tournaments out there in the Springs in Denver, um, just playing there. But yeah, that was a kind of a crazy process because there was nobody that was doing that kind of at that time at, in, in Anaheim or LA or yeah, everyone moves away and kind of commits there. So um, I think I was like one of the first or only like first kid to commit on a California team um, coming out of there. So um, it was kind of a whole new realm that I was, I was in. Um, but yeah, I, I committed pretty early on um, out of the ducks and um, yeah, then went to Janesville after that for, for two years. Um, so I did one year in high school uh, where Sol was with us and then did one year senior year of high school and then one year out and then ended up going to Colorado. Yeah, and and people may not know this, but a hockey career ain't all sunshine and rainbows. Um, <laughs> is there is there any things that uh, that you like kind of took with you that you learned from your playing on the web first. to go like that have helped you with triumph together? Like you know, you played four years of at college. I see here uh, maybe not a ton of opportunity. Like yeah. uh, you know, and and kind of grinded it out. And, you know, you played in the NAL for two years, the Vietnam, they call it. Um, so, yeah. you know, tough place to play. But just talk about maybe like that adversity that you faced throughout your career and it helping you uh, in starting this new endeavor. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of just how it kind of started out is in my junior, senior year, I realized I w- wasn't going to play pro, at least at a, not at a high level or whatnot. But I still want to continue to kind of make an impact in, in what I could do. Um, so I kind of sought other ways that I was able to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that definitely helps you just kind of seeing perspective wise is like, yeah, hockey's, hockey's been amazing, but that's not what my life is going to be for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, like I, I have other things that kind of look at and kind of, you just kind of have that humility and, and being able to see things through a different lens growing up and, um, yeah, even, yeah, I think so. I didn't score a goal. I think I'm James for first like 40 or 50 games or something like something crazy same same man it was like like outrageous yeah i was like nuts and i was like i was like playing every game but i wasn't scoring anything i don't even know if i had it was crazy and but just like (laughs) having that just like grit and determination i think to just like keep going and just have your head held high i think is big like obviously um and it puts things into perspective too like if you feel sorry for yourself if you get scratched or something or or you get hurt like a big injury i had concussions tore my labrum and bicep and stuff but it's like it, now looking back on it, it's like dude these kids are six years old going through chemo treatment and like losing their hair they're in hospitals for months at a time it's like my one night i wasn't i wasn't playing or something like it's not it's not that it's not that deep at the end of the day so just kind of looking back on it now and like i kind of had that headspace there it's like there's other things that it could be a lot worse and like now that i'm seeing it firsthand like there definitely is but yeah it's definitely a change of perspective um as you're kind of done playing and kind of in this in this world now Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, what's a good idea for Triumph Together, honestly, and I think everyone could use this, is is when you see a guy that you know, NHL, AHL, ECHL, he's getting scratched or he's not playing or he's not doing well, hook him up with a kid. Yeah. Give yeah, him a yeah. little bit of perspective. Seriously, yeah. I think that would go a long way, yeah, honestly, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. you know, the way you look at it, like the what you just said is so true, man. When we get scratched, you know, it's the end of the world. Like, and we're in our minds, it's all caving in on us. And then yeah. just to have a little bit perspective, like, hey, there's a six-year-old down the road that's in chemo treatment that, you know, might not ever be able to even get a chance to start playing hockey. Yeah. Um, yeah so that's that's like the, the beautiful thing about perspective and what something like Triumph Together can do for not only the kid, but for the person 
for the celebrity, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, just because there's definitely different ways to look at things. So yeah, and, and what we're what we're in, it is definitely is the end of the world at the time. But once you kind of take a step back, yeah, like, yeah it's not, and the it's players not might be so mad they gas your text, but <laughs> yeah. if they don't, you yeah. know, if they don't, you'd be doing them a big favor. Honestly, as much as you'd be helping the kid, you'd be helping the player just as much. Seriously, sure. it's instant gratification. Um, to, to, to see that and to help out somebody in a, in a struggling position and you get to be the reason that they're smiling. You get to be the reason that they get to go back to their friends and say, Oh, I met this guy. I met this guy. I had a great time. Like what you got to walk on the ice. Yeah. I got to walk on the ice and I got a puck too. Like, yeah. All, all yeah. This stuff. So, um, yeah, the, perspective wise, it's crazy too. It's like, I'm bringing these kids out and they've never been to like a sporting event. Like where we kind of take that for granted is like, Growing up, like we'd go to hockey games, we'd go to sporting events, we'd see big, like these kids aren't allowed to go to crowds. Like we go to like fairs or amusement parks or things, but like these kids are eight years old and the past four lives, they haven't been around, four years, they haven't been able to be around anybody. So like they're at these games and like they've never experienced all this stuff. And a lot of the times the younger kids, like their biggest thing is like getting on the jumbotron. I'm like, that's not like, that's not the biggest thing that you're, you're doing today, but they love like the jumbotron or they uh, love the mascots or just like, it's like the little things you're just like, damn, like that's all it took for the, to make this kid's day is to see someone in like a costume. And like, he's so pumped about her, like get to see themselves on TV, like things like that. It's, it's, it's cool to see. It's, it's actually the best. <laughs> it's, it's actually the best when you see like, I've seen like capes for kids when they put capes on their backs and they just get so jacked up on the jumbo yeah. truck on, like, yeah, yeah. in the home crowd going mm -hmm. and to do it. Um, we asked this question a little bit earlier, but I want to take it to a different context. Mm -hmm. Your favorite memory or moment playing hockey? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Scoring your first goal for the Jets. <laughs> that, was, that was a big, that was a relief. I'll tell you that. That was, that was big time. Um, I don't know. There was a lot of good ones. I mean, I always liked like, like, as you know, like any of like the like big games with like the, the PK on the line where you're out there doing that kind of thing. But I think the gold pan win um, anytime, anytime at CC, we weren't definitely weren't the best, but we were playing all these, all these amazing teams and all these players. Like we go into North Dakota where it's sold out with all these NHL guys. We go to Denver. And, uh, one year we, we were lucky enough to win the gold pan, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, we played an outdoor game against Air Force, which is pretty cool at school. Um, so those those are pretty special. Anytime that we can make like a really big win um, against any of those really tough teams, we're we're pretty cool. That's that that's awesome. Um, I, I don't have anything else, Gatesy. I just want to thank you for coming on and sharing this and uh, spreading the word and making the, the lives of these kids way better, tenfold better, and giving them experiences that are going to last with them forever. So, yeah, uh, I just want to piggyback on that. Gatesy, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Triumph underscore together underscore on Instagram and yeah. triumphtogether.net is their website. Please check it out. Get involved if you can. Gatesy, you're the man, bro. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. And, yeah, just any anyone out there listening that can – helps help share the love help wants to get involved at all like any 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 athletes any kids anyone that um we're able to help out and more than happy to so um yeah thanks for having me appreciate it superhero gatesy thanks boys <laughs>